Big on 9 on your side, live at 6, starts right now. Day one of the Arizona teacher walkout. Uh, the estimated 60 to 75,000 swarmed the capital today. 97 degree temperatures, though, cut that short, and there are reports of at least one woman being treated by emergency services. Yeah, Kevin Bouton and Carlos Herrera are live with the very latest from lawmakers and the trip Tucson teachers made. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Stella Inger. I'm Pat Paris. More on that Red for Ed movement in just a moment, but first, a, a man kidnapped outside of a local auto zone. Yeah, Tucson police say 66 year old Timothy Abriola was leaving work at the auto zone on Irvington and 13th Street when this happened. Several suspects carjacked the man and took him away. Police say the evidence left at the scene indicates he was seriously hurt. Anyone with information should call police. In a separate incident today, a man was arrested on charges of kidnapping a woman. Sierra Vista police say the victim called 911 from a tombstone Circle K before dawn this morning. As she told dispatchers she had been taken from her home while sleeping and had just escaped from a trunk of a car. Officers found signs she had been duct taped. Tombstone marshals pulled over the car after a chase. 30-year-old Sierra Vesta resident Chris Gray was arrested. They say he unsuccessfully tried to light the victim on fire. Detectives are looking for possible witnesses at that Circle K. Anyone who has information should call Sierra Vista police. Today, thousands of teachers walked out in a collective action demanding more pay and more resources. That's right. Kevin Bouton is live in Phoenix tracking the very latest from lawmakers and how they'll be paying for it. Kevin. Yeah, Stella and Pat, uh, it seems both sides have really dug in here and the governor did meet with some of the educators plucked from the crowd today. He talked with them about his proposal. He's trying to win public support for it while at the same time trying to build support for his plan in the legislature itself. Their voices echoed high above the Capitol, but it's unclear if they had any effect on the negotiations over teacher pay happening inside. And we are bringing a change. After Governor Ducey introduced his proposal two weeks ago to boost teacher pay, lawmakers have yet to see a version of it that they can actually vote on. Republican Senator Steve Smith is a member of the Education Committee and the Powerful Appropriations Committee. Yeah, this, this pay raise will be in the budget that we are going to pass. And while he's not sold on it, Democrat David Bradley from Tucson conceded that the Ducey plan has enough support to get through the Senate at least. He's banking on an improved economy. We've been here before. I was here 13 years ago when we were saying the same things. And lo and behold, 2008 happened and our state budget uh, crumbled. Now the governor must find support in the House for his plan. Some lawmakers say they are ready to work through the weekend on a budget whenever they get it. And some Republicans tell me they don't expect the budget bill to drop until next week. The legislature has adjourned and isn't scheduled to be back until Monday. Live in Phoenix at the state capitol, Kevin Bouton, Kega 9 on your side. Kevin, thank you. And Tucson teachers are heading back tonight after spending their day at the capitol. Yeah, the event was cut short amid that heat as we talked about. Reached 97 today in Phoenix. Carlos Herrera joins us now with more from Phoenix. Carlos. Yeah, well, the heat wasn't even enough to stop these uh, teachers from traveling from the Tucson area. In fact, most of those uh, did so in a group. They did uh, travel here in a bus or carpooled here. Uh, they say the drive, though, was really long and the heat was intense, but they just hope that the sacrifice is definitely worth it. They just hope their voices are heard here today. Busloads of teachers making a two hour trip from Tucson to Phoenix for a historic day. Traffic was completely insane on the way up. Lots of red for Ed. People honking, people cheering. We made a 10 hour drive for this. Why? Because the feeling of solidarity with other teachers. Absolutely worth it. On that bus was Sandy Payton, a TUSD teacher for almost 20 years. This is one of her last bus rides. She plans on leaving Arizona next year because of low pay. I'm going to Texas 
where they pay first year teachers more than I will be making in my 23rd year of teaching. She hopes today's march brings change for educators in the future. Whatever happens in this movement is too little, too late for me. We are all in here together. This has brought schools together, districts together, and now we're bringing the whole state together. We are all brothers and sisters in education, and we are standing here in solidarity. Calista Ratloff is also a TUSD teacher. She and her colleagues are willing to stay here as long as they have to. We are not going home. We will not go home until we get this money. They say the drive and the time and the heat are definitely worth it. Until Ducey and the rest of the legislature gets it together and gets us the funding for our kids. And while they're holding up for raises for teachers and staff, what they really want is help. Teacher retention and support staff. Teachers are putting in maximum effort with minimal resources. And some of the teachers we spoke with say they've booked hotels or Airbnbs in the Phoenix area. They just simply want to be ready to go for tomorrow morning. We're live at the state capitol this uh, evening. I'm Carlos Herrera. Okay, good on your side. Carlos, thank you. And since many school districts are closed, students have a day or two off. One senior in the Vail School District says the timing of the walkout is inconvenient because of AP testing preparation. It's kind of negative, negatively affecting us as students, but also these teachers have been there for us our entire lives, so all of us are happy to support them. Some charter schools in southern Arizona are showing support as well. Academy del Sol gave its staff the opportunity not to come in today, but all staff members did come to work and showed their support in their own way. Our students have all decided to wear red instead of their normal uniform clothes. Uh, our staff is all wearing red and we're doing something special for our kids and bringing everyone together here at the school. A teacher at Basis Tucson North says many of the teachers uh, went to the Capitol today while some stayed in Tucson holding up signs and wearing red to show support this morning. When education is underfunded, that affects all of us. So we both support the uh, particular desires and needs of public school teachers, and we believe in the bigger picture, this affects us too. It's amazing. She says basis yeah. teachers are rallying again right now until 6.30 this evening. School was closed today, and they plan to be back to normal hours on Monday. Chief Neurologist Aaron Christensen joins us now with a look at our weather. Hot day for that 97 in the Phoenix area, 95 here in Tucson, and we're looking at temperature staying pretty close to that again tomorrow. If not for our cloud cover, we'd have been even warmer than 10 degrees above normal here in Tucson. In fact, we were actually closer to the record of 99 than we were to that normal of 85. Still looking at those extensive clouds live from Twin Peaks and Silver Bell. This is a look to the southeast. Those clouds will stay with us overnight, and they are keeping us a little cooler from what we would normally be if we had full on sunshine. The wind right now from the northwest 10 miles per hour and we're sitting at 89 here in the Tucson area. Now we do have a chance for storms for parts of southern Arizona coming up the next 48 hours. I will tell you who could see those storms and who won't. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. We have more fallout from the teacher strike. That's right. Up next, a report from Valerie Cavazos on how county employers are making accommodations. You're watching Kega 9 on your side. The impact of today's teacher walkout is being felt countywide as some government workers of school age kids had to find some child care. Yeah, Kagan and I investigative reporter Valerie Cavazos has all the details, Val. Yeah, Pima County Administrator Chuck Huckleberry sent a memo out a few days ago to all the county employees, a guidance on how to prepare for this day. Now, he encouraged departments to be flexible with work schedules. Employees can use accrued leave if they don't have any. They can take time off without pay. But the supervisors were told to plan for potential disruption to work assignments. Mm -hmm. We checked with the uh, sheriff's department. That does affect public safety. We're told there was very little impact on staffing levels. Uh, Huckleberry says the county's plan is in place for the duration of the walkout. Meantime, the superintendent of the largest school district said earlier this week he's trying to give the community enough time to react to school closures. If we have a majority of schools in that situation, an overwhelming majority of our 89 schools are in that situation. It makes greater sense out of uh, respect and the time needed for our parents and our community to mobilize and make alternative arrangements. It makes better sense to just look at a district closure. And right now, districts, parents, workers throughout the region are in a reactive state waiting for more information from union leaders 
on how long the walkout will last. Back to you. Val, thank you. And Aaron is up next with a look at our weather. Plus, today's Diamondbacks game marked an achievement. Hadn't been done since 1977. And the Arizona Cardinals are on the clock in the NFL draft. You're watching KGAN 9 on your side. Now, KGAN 9 on your side. First warning weather brought to you by Casino Del Sol, the soul of Tucson. 95 degrees, our high in the Tucson area today, and we made it to 97 up in Phoenix, Gila Bend, 91. Uh, 98 rather 91 in Casa Grande those temperatures creeping into the 90s here with a few exceptions of course we were at 77 up in Cholo 86 across Sierra Vista as well as Douglas our 95 degrees does put us 10 degrees above normal we were actually closer to the record of 99 right now we're at 89 degrees humidity in the single digits the wind not too terribly strong at just about 10 miles per hour but that is something that's going to be picking up tomorrow we're watching here on our wind future cast sustained winds especially east of Tucson in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range we are expecting some gusts in up to 30 perhaps 35 miles per hour even across the Tucson area eastern Pima County so we know it's going to be stronger into Greenlee Graham and Cochise counties now those clouds have kept us even a little bit cooler from what we normally would have been just a few degrees but as we head into the next 48 hours we're going to watch the potential for some thunderstorms this area of low pressure off the Pacific Northwest coast is a thunderstorm maker. Notice I didn't say a rain maker with this increase in storms or this isolated storm chance moving in Friday night and Saturday. We have about a 20% chance. We'll see some storms across Mount Lemon, Safford, Wilcox, Bisbee, Douglas, Thatcher. But notice I didn't say rain. Just because we have convective activity and thunderstorms developing doesn't necessarily mean we're going to see some soaking rain. So the chance for storms is still slim, even for those areas at 20%. And when we're in sort of this pre monsoonal period, we start to get some of those storms going. We're really concerned about the dry brush, obviously gusting winds, erratic winds coming in from all different directions that can fuel fires if they were to start because of dry lightning. So we are expecting more dry lightning than soaking rain. In fact, or no rain, even for those places that do carry a 20% chance for storms here as we head through the Friday night and Saturday time frame. We do have a report of a fire. It's called the car fire burning in Cochise County. This is on private property now, and we do know that two teenagers uh, have been charged with reckless use of um, something that would cause a fire. So it does look as though this was caused by humans and the smoke that you're seeing if you live in the Cochise area, uh, Cochise County area is a lot bigger because the back burns, according to Carol Cap is there, uh, the burns that they have been sending to try to contain that fire, but it is on private property at this point. We of course will let you know if that does tend to grow and cause a bigger risk for other folks. 60 degrees here overnight, mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow we're looking at 94 for the Tucson area, so temperature is still quite similar to what they were today, but again, those gusts up to 35 miles per hour. A look at the seven day forecast now breezy to windy conditions all the way through our weekend. Again, we are not looking at any rain for the Tucson area east of here. We could see a few of those dry lightning strikes, but really wind is going to be an issue through early next week. Temps cool though to the 80s Monday, Tuesday, upper 70s Wednesday. Erica is in with sports. Thank you, Aaron. Well, outside the Roadrunners locker room after last night's win, it was Bob Marley that was blasting through the hallway. And if that's any indi any indication, the team feels pretty relaxed and in control after their 6-0 blowout win over San Jose last night. Now, Tucson scored early, and they scored often in their first home playoff game in team history. It was Dylan Strom who led the way with three points, yet they were all assists. But it was Aiden Hill, the goalie, who was the star of the night. He was perfect in net, stopping all 20. 21 shots faced. Tucson didn't actually allow a shot on goal until 16 minutes into the first period. Here is Aiden Hill after his shutout performance last night. Uh, just a team game. The guys were boxing guys out, battling in front of our net, and uh, kept their chance to a minimum by playing in their end as much as we could. And yeah, no, we had a great all-around performance every individual. I thought he looked good. I mean, he made some he made some huge saves, especially in the second period. They really came at us and had a lot of chances in tight. I thought he stood his ground great, and he looked composed in there. And and. Um, now you got to do it again. <laughs> Tucson can clinch the series with a win tomorrow night.
We are backstage at the NFL draft right now. Mama, Josh is right there. You can see him. It's our 5 o'clock producer, B. Rosen. She is the sister of UCLA quarterback Josh Rosen. And guess where baby bro is coming? He is coming here to the desert. Josh Rosen chosen by the Arizona Cardinals. They traded up from 15 with the Oakland Raiders at 10. Very exciting. She won't have to go very far to see him play. We will, of course, have more on the NFL draft later tonight at 10 o'clock. All right, stop me if you have heard this before. So far this season, the Diamondbacks have won the series. Now heading into today's final game in Philadelphia this afternoon, Arizona had won all seven of their series to start this season. Now we'll win today and they'd be the first team to win the first eight series since the 1977 Dodgers. All right, pick this one up. Top of the first with a runner on for Gerard Dyson and just the fourth pitch of the game. Dyson takes Ben Lively deep. A two run home run. Diamondbacks up early two to nothing. They lived by the long ball today. Three nothing in the third for Nick Ahmed with runners on the corners. He goes yard two that extends the Diamondbacks lead to six nothing later in the third this time David Peralta takes a turn he sends one to the section next to where Nick Ahmed's ball landed D Max take this one eight two they have now won eight straight series to start the season Pat do you know what happened in 77 with those Dodgers um I do remember what happened in 1977 with those. <laughs> they lost the World Series. <laughs> they did. Maybe the Diamondbacks will have a little bit better luck this time around if exactly. things keep trending in that direction. Th let's hope they keep that up. But I don't know about you guys. I've already sent in my tech ticket request to be Rose. Oh yeah. yeah. For so, the Arizona Cardinals this fall. So, so yeah. So the funny <laughs> thing about that is she said, you know, wherever he gets drafted, well, I'm going to go there to mm -hmm. that city. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Arizona. Yeah, you're coming right, right back, back here to the desert. <laughs> Very exciting. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> the annual party celebrating the plant that symbolizes life here in the borderlands. It's a 10 day event filled with tasting seminars, live music and lots of tequila. You're watching Kega 9 on your side. The Heritage Agave Festival goes for 10 days and is packed with tasting seminars, music and lots of partying. And that is going to be starting tomorrow. Looks great. We'll be right back. Stay with us.